Hi guys, welcome to yet another case study based MCQs. Now, obviously, these kind of questions are going to be there in exams, and that is why, like you know, we all are doing these questions. First, we are going to be doing all the questions which are there from the module, and over a period of time, our own created MCQs. Let me just remind you one small thing that SCMP is one paper that please do not ignore. I do understand it is a self-paced paper, but I also do understand you still have to be passing in it. Okay. And the studies that you all do over here, this is basic business common sense that ICA is trying to impart to you. And for any student who all had given in the old course, the new course is slightly different. The content has slightly been increased. The method also will be slightly different. Although a better option is that you can try to do your new modules that are there. Plus watch these MCQs that I'm putting. Also recommend that you join our telegram channel. So therefore every day, whatever MCQs we all put and every day, whatever the information we have to be passing over to the students that is given to every student. With that, uh, I'm starting just one last thing, our complete batch of SCMPE. Uh, you all can click in the uh, link that is given in the description. You can click on the link that is there in the description and you all can enroll for it. That is your call. Always a better option that you take the books and study by yourself. But in case there is some kind of a difficulty and in case you want to be taking the entire course, okay, the link is there in the description. With that, uh, let us start it off. So today the chapter that we all have is modern business environment. Now modern business environment, this chapter is all about SCM. Now this word no SCM is actually not strategic cost management. If you'll type on SCM, if, if you'll type uh, SCM on Google, it'll give you the complete form that is supply chain management. So this chapter is all about supply chain management, supply chain management, how the goods get supply to the final customer that is supply chain management. And obviously in this chain, there are a lot of people who are involved at each and every stage. Let's do the questions. But before that, some concepts is supply chains in reality are what? If you're a manufacturing company, you will be having a factory for sure. In the factory, you're going to be purchasing the raw materials and then you're going to be converting them into finished goods. You purchase the raw materials from whom? From the suppliers. Suppliers will sell you the raw materials, correct? Now, this part of the supply chain from the supplier to the factory is popularly called as upstream supply chain. Apart from that, there is something called as downstream supply chain also. Think that factory has produced the goods. What it will do with the goods? It will sell it to the wholesalers. Wholesalers can also be called as distributors. Distributors will sell these goods to the retailers. And retailers will finally sell these goods to the final customer. So customers always come towards the bottom part of the supply chain. And that is why from factory to the customer, this part of the supply chain is going to be called as downstream supply chain. So do remember that consumers come towards the end of the supply chain. They are the end receivers of the goods as such. Now supply chains worldwide function in two ways. You have something called as a push supply chain or a pull supply chain. Let's study what do you mean by a push supply chain. Now push supply chain basically starts with what? We are pushing all the things. That means that there is a manufacturer. Manufacturer who has forecasted the demand. He thinks that this year these many goods should be produced because, uh, because the demand will be this much. So therefore the manufacturer as such produces the goods based upon the estimates of goods that he has. Example, a company like Apple follow push system. They approximately know what will be the demand in this year based upon, say, the previous models. Those guys can be forecasting like, you know, that this will be the demand, say, of iPhone 16, so on and so forth. Now, based upon this demand, they do understand how much raw material they need to be purchasing. This raw material will be supplied to them by, in this case, the suppliers. So supplier try to supply based upon the demand of the manufacturer and manufacturer has forecasted the demand. So push system should be followed wherever it is easy for you to forecast the demand. You try to forecast the demand, you try to think how much I will be producing. Now try to be thinking whenever you will be producing, you will sell these goods to whom? You will sell these goods to the distributors that we all see. Distributors also keep their own stock with them. Wholesalers will always have stock. Why they will always have stock? Because retailers can demand that stock at any moment of time. 
Retailers also keep the stock no with themselves. Why? Because they don't know when the consumer will be coming. But we know that customer will be coming. But when they will be coming, we don't know. So we got to be keeping the stock. And here there is a final guy that is a customer. Per customer will be purchasing whatever stock is available. Think in this case that a company like Apple might be a perfect system, a perfect example of push system. Why? Now in USA, the CEO is there and the entire team is there. They all try to forecast the demand based upon the demand. They try to be thinking in this case, we got to be producing this much, but for producing this much, they require a lot of resources. They require processors. They require like, you know, the glass, they require the chips. There are so many things that go inside the making of the iPhones, right? For this, these guys have different, different supplies. They have a contract with them and they all tell them like, you know, that we want these many goods every now and then. Okay. Now, the factories they distribute the goods to each and every big distributors that are there you will search on google you will come to know which guys are the biggest distributors of apple phones these guys also keep the stock why because retailers can demand that stock at any moment of time and whenever you go to any store like say chroma like say uh, reliance digital you have stock over there you purchase whatever is available do you ever have an option i don't want this color iphone i want a multicolor iPhone. Will that option be there? No. Okay. Because Apple is not producing for you. It is not custom production. They are trying to do the production in large scale. So therefore cost is also less. And in this case, like, you know, the things are also working out in a proper way. Those guys can purchase the material in bulk. The cost will start to be falling. They can give a lot of work as such to the workers and so on. Okay. So this is nothing but push system. Push system starts away with manufacturer estimating the demand. So if the manufacturers can estimate the demand in a proper way, there is some kind of the accuracy in the demand. Your push system work wonders. Apart from that, do remember this entire system is very intensive as far as working capital goes because each and everybody will be having the stock with them. Stock means your working capital will be trapped inside. So therefore, lot amount of working capital is required for the push system to happen. You all will understand also Apple has one of the largest working capitals because their internal reserves are so high. Every year they all make so much amount of profit. So therefore, to invest in working capital is not a very big deal for them. And now that cycle is continuous for Apple. But then there is a growing now thing of something called as pull system also. In pull system, nobody tries to be having any stock with them, okay, because the demands of the customers keep on changing. In that case, the supply chain does not start with a manufacturer estimating the demand because that cannot be estimated because the consumer's preference are changing every now and then. So in that case, first of all, what happens is that customer comes to the retailer and he says, I want these kind of goods. Example, think it of that there is an interior designer. Okay. Uh, I'll say a fashion designer. Chalo. Now fashion keeps on changing these days. Suppose there is a person who wants some specific kind of things. So therefore he will come to the store and he will say, I want something like this. Now that thing might not be there in stock also. Okay. Because these things change so fast that people cannot be keeping such things in stock because it'll become outdated very fast. So therefore customer comes, he gives the order. To obviously whom? The retailer. Retailer gives this order obviously to whom? To the distributor. Distributor sends this order to the manufacturer. Manufacturer will start to be producing. Obviously, whenever manufacturer will produce, what it will require is the raw material. Whatever raw material is required to exactly produce whatever the customer has told that only will be purchased by the manufacturer from the supplier. So supplier is going to be the last person over here. This entire system is called as pull system over here. Inventory keeping is very less. And usually this system is followed wherever consumers demands keeps on changing. You are in an industry whereby changes are happening too much. So you cannot be keeping any stock because stock will start to become outdated. Okay. So this case study that we are about to be doing, it is all about your push system, your pull system. And lastly, in this case, your combination of both of them that give you the entire knowledge of supply chains. So let's start away with this kind of a case study. ABC Limited is a very profitable company with high sales volume for its products. Okay. 
द कंपनी हैज बीन इन द बिजनेस फॉर लास्ट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स द बिजनेस साइकल्स कैन बी प्रिडिक्टेड विद हाई एक्यूरेसी द प्रोडक्ट दैट इट मैन्युफैक्चर्स कैन बी बॉट ऑफ द शेल्फ फ्रॉम रिटेल स्टोर्स ओके डिमांड इज कंटिन्यूस थ्रू आउट द ईयर हेंस इट्स इन्वेंट्री टर्न ओवर इज वेरी हाई प्रॉफिट मार्जिन अर्न ऑन इट सेल्स आर वेरी हाई ओके एंड जनरेट सफिशियंट कैश फ्लोस नाउ दिस पैराग्राफ आई एम रीडिंग इट वंस मोर फॉर फ्यू ऑफ द थिंग्स कंपनी इज वेरी प्रॉफिटेबल वेरी हाई सेल्स वॉल्यूम हैज बीन देर इट हैज बीन नाउ एस्टैब्लिश फॉर लास्ट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स बिजनेस साइकिल्स कैन बी प्रिडिक्टेड विद हाई एक्यूरेसी दैट मीन्स वी नो इन विच सीजन डिमांड विल बी हाई इन विच सीजन डिमांड विल बी लो वी कैन ट्राई टू प्रिडिक्ट दैट विद ग्रेट अमाउंट ऑफ एक्यूरेसी फर्दर The products can be bought from the retail stores off the shelf. So therefore, it is kind of a brick and a mortar system. मतलब there are physical stores where the customer can be going and buying the goods. Demand is continuous throughout the year. So therefore, even this thing is very good now. Like you know, there are not much amount of the seasons fluctuations also. Okay, and the demand is there. Hence, inventory turnover is high. Inventory turnover is why you all have done inventory turnover ratios. I guess at a lower level, inventory turnover ratio. How fast you are selling the goods? That is inventory turnover ratio. That is also very high. Okay, profit margin earned on the sales are very high and generate enough cash flow. So cash is not a problem. Production cost is optimal when products are produced on a large scale. Okay, so our cost automatically falls if our production is going to be done on a large scale. It's a mid-sized company that yields or that yields sufficient bargaining power over its suppliers. That means we can exercise sufficient bargaining power. That means. If I tell my suppliers, I am going to be purchasing so much amount of material from you. How much discount will you give? Okay, so my bargaining power over the suppliers is very strong. Further, factory land is owned, so no problem of the rentals also, and it has sufficient storage space within its premises. So even storage is not a problem. Working capital of the needs are sufficiently met by the internal reserves. You all will understand everything on the asset side gets funded by the liability side. obviously on your asset side you all have your current assets if i subtract current liabilities from there on asset side what gets left is working capital for working capital my internal profits on the liability side are more than enough i don't need to be taking any loan or something it's not that i'm taking a loan from the bank to meet my working capital needs that's not it i have enough amount of working capital okay so this is the entire question that is there okay now given the above conditions which type of supply chain may be more suitable for abc limited beta there are only two types of supply chains obviously one of them is going to be a pull model supply chain other of them is going to be a push model supply chain what do you think based upon the case study that we all are doing which one should be the correct answer think put in the comments below this is mcq number 1How much will be the demand? When will be the demand? Okay, there is one point that is very important. Second, production cost is optimal when products are produced on a large scale. So, if I produce on a large scale, it is not a problem. Stocks will not become outdated very fast. I will produce based upon the demand, and I can predict the demand quite accurately. And third point to be noted over here is this point: working capital needs of the company are sufficiently met by the internal reserves. these three points tell me that i think so for the company push model is something that will be apt as such push system basically works in all such cases only whereby demand can be predicted very accurately now push system under the push system you will have lot of stock with you okay obviously lot of stock means you are going to be producing on a large scale now producing on a large scale becomes of great advantage when 
your cost falls so therefore in the question it was given it will be producing on a large scale our cost is going to be falling lastly working capital requirement is very high because lot amount of money will be trapped in working capital but working capital is not a problem for us because we generate enough profits so answer i guess should be b over here that's the correct answer so that was mcq number 1 let's go over to mcq number 2 now where in the flow of the supply chain are the customers okay so customers where do they come in the supply chain at the end of the supply chain that is downstream the other option at the beginning of the supply chain that is upstream now in this case answer i've already discussed think 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 this was the diagram that i showed you of supply chain customers come towards the bottom okay they are the last element in the downstream supply chain so in this case answer should be a that is at the end of the supply chain that's the correct answer let's go over to mcq number 3 implication of high inventory turnover ratio on working capital logged in finished goods is okay bring out the options please first option working capital gets logged in finished goods for a shorter period of time okay the other option working capital gets logged in finished goods for a longer period of time think in fact this is ca inter stuff of ratios might be think type your answer below obviously if your goods are going to be sold faster high inventory turnover ratio means goods are getting sold faster so therefore your working capital will be trapped in your finished goods for a shorter period of time so answer in this case should be a that's the correct answer 1 2 3 done let's go over to the next one fourth what are the advantages that abc can derive from economies of scale of production on production cost and ability to wield sufficient bargaining power over its suppliers think like this what advantages if i have economies of large scale my cost will fall if my cost will fall further there is one other thing also i have bargaining power over my supplier so therefore i will be able to push down the raw material cost further so therefore my production cost will fall because of uh, economies of large scale further my raw material cost will far more because will fall more because i have good bargaining power over my suppliers due to this overall my cost will fall if my cost will fall i can try to be thinking let's lower the prices and try to capture the market i can be thinking like that but let's look at the options this is whatever i wanted to explain but let's look over the options first option the factors provide abc limited a competitive advantage on the ability to compete with the market based price of the products it can follow low cost advantage strategy okay what's the other option beta the factors provide abc limited a competitive advantage on the ability to compete with the market based upon variety of finished product it can follow product differentiation advantages advantage strategy one sec there are two concepts over here one of them is low cost advantage other of them is product differentiation low cost advantage means what beta low cost advantage means that my product on quality will be similar to other products but my pricing will be super less now my pricing will be less automatically i will be able to capture the market but this thing will be possible when your cost is less when you enjoy economies of large scale when you can purchase raw material at a cheaper price the other is product differentiation whereby what i try to be doing is that my products are differentiated from other people so i try to charge higher price as compared to the competitors so this strategy is different this strategy is completely different but i think based upon the question that is there because question has told that due to economies of large scale which option do you think makes a better sense okay what advantage will it give i think it will give us an advantage to lower our cost once we lower our cost we will be able to capture the market further by lowering the price so therefore in such case i guess we will be able to follow low cost advantage strategy 
वट एवर ऑल दीज थिंग्स द क्वेश्चन एज टोल्ड इट हेज गॉट नथिंग टू डू विथ प्रोडक्ट डिफरेंसिएशन फॉर प्रोडक्ट डिफरेंसिएशन इट शुड हैव बीन टोल्ड दैट द प्रोडक्ट्स दैट वी मैन्युफैक्चर आर वेरी डिफरेंट एज कंपेयर टू वट एवर कंपेरिटर्स आर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एट दैट टाइम द केस विल बी इंटायरली डिफरेंट सो ओवर हियर आंसर शुड बी ए so a is the correct answer okay so mcq number 4 is also done let's look at the next one what risks are involved in the selected model selected model means push model i guess so what are the four options beta a risk of overstocking due to variations in the actual demand as compared to the forecast okay this is one of the risks second that they have told inventory has working capital logged in the finished goods and therefore need for storage space there is a higher need for storage space for finished goods okay third one is uh, both a and b okay and uh, d is what neither a and b c in the push model no one thing that happens is many times you tend to over produce because you know that there will be demand but if that demand does not come then in that case you will have good amount of stocks so therefore there might be overstocking because you are not producing based upon the demand of the customer you have estimated those things at some moment of time based upon that you are trying to be producing so therefore there is a danger that overstocking will happen i'll give you a small example microsoft i guess in the year 2010 or 11 for the first time launched surface laptops first time it was called as surface 1 at that time now ultimately you know they had produced so much and the demand for that was nothing like you know it was very kind of a failed product for microsoft for the first time when they all had launched now that product like you know was such a big failure that in end microsoft had to break 1 lakh surfaces because there was no demand for it somebody can always be thinking sir they could have given to me at 500 rupees also they don't do that they never ever let the price of their goods fall they will be okay in trying to destroy the goods but they never ever let the prices fall that is their strategy same thing with all like you know a company like uh, louis vuitton up and so on if they have any stock left they burn it to fire they never ever sell it at a discounted price now so a will be the answer in fact b also i have already spoken about it that lot amount of money will be trapped in your finished goods so therefore there is going to be a requirement for higher working capital that is one thing because lot amount of money will be trapped in the finished goods plus obviously because you are producing so high you will require storage space for sp uh, storing all those finished goods so therefore a also is a risk of a push model b is also a risk of the push model so as per me answer should be c over here both a and b that is the correct answer okay chali so this is all together done now mcq number 6 had abc limited been producing the goods that are highly customized in nature based on individual requirements what would be the most appropriate type of supply chain to adopt again i guess there are two options same two options pull model supply chain other one is push model this is easy you all can comment here yeah. this is easy stuff now obviously we all know the answer but then i'll show you this system how does pull system work customer wants something that is unique he wants something that can be customized okay we cannot keep stock of all these things because every customer is different he approaches a retailer he approaches a retailer and says that i want these kind of goods produce it for me okay retailer gives order to the distributor to the manufacturer manufacturer will start to be producing whenever he will be producing at that time he will require raw material raw material whatever he will require will be purchased from the supplier in smaller smaller quantities because we are only producing for each and every customer so therefore answer has to be over here push system sorry the pull system so therefore out of a and b in this case the model that we will be selecting is going to be a that is pull model supply chain that is the correct answer with that my all the mcqs for this chapter the case study based are all done now one thing i want everybody to remember that whether you like or not you will have to be clearing this paper to appear for cfin it was a trick of the institute to remove this thing 
from the eight papers so therefore like you know you all have a thing in your mind now there are only six people uh, six papers and more people can enroll for the ca course but ultimately if you think only the pattern has changed those two papers have been put separately and now we are not concentrating on that it is okay do not concentrate as much as the other six papers but at least do that much so therefore you all can be clearing this and again not a person who says ever that you have to be joining any course or something no if you can try to take the module and study all the things by yourself the best option you will learn it for entire life because these things will be uh, relevant to you in case you're going to be doing business in case you will manage somebody else's business in case you will do your future studies like mba and so on in acc also all these things are there in many 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 subjects now in case you will require help then obviously our course is there but first thing always try to take out say 30 minutes a day and try to study some part of this and moreover try to be familiar with how the businesses are working worldwide automatically you will be good in this subject i'll see you all now with another case study in the next lecture take care bye